Hello everyone and welcome to round 5, well rather game 5 of the 1971 semi-final candidates match between Bobby Fischer and Bent Larson. Uh, as you've seen in the previous game, uh, Fischer won yet again in a beautiful King's Indian game. If you haven't seen it, there will be a link in the description below, so feel free to check it out. Uh, now uh, the result is currently in this match 4-0 for Fischer and Larson really, uh, <laughs> what he doesn't want to do, he doesn't want to take uh, Mark Taimanov's steps and uh, end the match 6-0. Uh, so he he can still bounce back, but it will be I mean no no one can even remember when was the last time uh, Bobby Fischer lost the game. It was uh, some sometime during the 1970 Palma de Mallorca interzonal tournament. Uh, but that being said, uh, we said that uh, after game four uh, the match was postponed, and uh, as uh, Larson started feeling ill. Now some people thought that he started feeling ill because he was simply crushed by by four to zero result. Uh, others said that uh, it was the cause of the uh, uh, what it's called a altitude sickness. Uh, I've also found uh, some people call it uh, elevation sickness. Uh, what altitude sickness is, basically your body reacts to uh, lower oxygen pressure at uh, higher altitudes. And uh, I, I even found a YouTube video, a, a video on YouTube about how to um, how to get your body ready for when you visit uh, Denver, Colorado. Uh, it says that uh, altitude sick sickness will mostly go away after like 24 hours or maybe a day and a half uh, and then you're ready to go climbing but uh, you know if it doesn't you should definitely uh, seek out some help uh, and it's uh, as this is already supposed to be uh, game five they already played four games uh, it's hard to say if uh, if Larson really was suffering from altitude sickness then uh, the, the sickness w would have already kicked in during game one and it seems he would w was playing all of the games uh, while suffering uh, with altitude sickness. So it's uh, very hard to say. I haven't found uh, was this really the case because then the match simply continued and uh, nothing nothing was said about this any anymore. Uh, but a lot of you have mentioned this in the comments, so uh, thank you for that. Thank you for increasing my vast knowledge. So that being said, let's check out the game. Again, Fisher has the white pieces and again he opens with e4. Uh, before I forget, we do have a nice photo of this match, uh, sorry about that, there it is, uh, the one we've already seen, but this is a photo challenge as it's been a very long time since we had one. Uh, who can you recognize uh, amongst all, all these people here? And extra points if you can name the event uh, during which uh, this was taken and also <laughs> uh, which game was it. So there we have it, best of luck to everyone, now let's check out the game. Like we said, uh, Fisher opens with e4. Uh, of course. Uh, we have c5 by Larson, knight to f3, d6, d4. Uh, the Sicilian uh, defense is on the board. c captures, knight captures, knight to f6, knight to c3, knight to c6, uh, and the bishop to c4. The Sozin attack by Fisher, uh, as he always goes for it. Uh, we have e6, uh, transposing into the Scheveningen, bishop to b3, and now bishop to e7. Uh, we have bishop to e3, castles, and this is uh, the exact same order of moves that was uh, played in game 3 uh, in the match Fischer versus Larsen. Uh, we have castles, bishop to d7, and f4. And uh, this is the exact same position that was on the board uh, during game 3. And if you remember, uh, during game 3, uh, Larsen played a6, uh, to which Fischer replied f5. And then uh, only after Larson played this queen to c8 move, uh, the game was already lost. Uh, the, uh, you can remember that uh, captures on e6 was played, captures, 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 and then Fischer found this a remarkable knight to a4 move, uh, which basically ends the game. There's no defense against knight to b6, uh, which would come against uh, as a, uh, an attack against the queen and the rook, and also the queen will no longer be able to protect the e6 pawn. So this was a, 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 ver a very swift victory in round three. Uh, in game three, so if you haven't seen that, uh, a link to all of the games will be in the description below. Uh, you know, you should definitely check it out. Uh, th those are some wonderful games. Uh, do do feel free to expand your vast knowledge as well. Uh, so here, after f4, Larson doesn't bother himself with this a6 move. He finds an improvement. Queen to c8, immediately preventing f5. And here, I think, after already being down four points in the match, uh, uh, this next move... Uh, is not the, the the greatest move in the position, but I, I think uh, Fisher either had it prepared and uh, just waited for for Larson to fall for it, uh, or he simply played it to, to crush, uh, you know, really crush uh, Larson, uh, as he was already feeling really bad about how the whole match match was going. Uh, here, Fisher pushed f5 uh, nonetheless. So Larson prepared this uh, as an improvement on game three uh, to prevent f5, and Fisher now plays it, and now. 
Uh, I mean, it's uh, fairly obvious that it's a pawn sacrifice. Uh, but what does Fisher gain from it? Nothing much, really. Uh, Larson plays knight captures on d4. Okay, bishop captures, we have e captures on f5, and now queen to d3. Uh, Fisher threatens to win back the pawn. Uh, so we have f captures on e4, Larson accepts the pawn, and knight captures on e4, knight captures on e4, and now queen captures on e4. Uh, okay, bishop to e6. Uh, offering to, uh, to trade bishops. Bishop captures and f captures would only help black. You would now have a very nice pawn chain here. Uh, in the center, you, you can exchange rooks and all would be well for black here. So uh, instead, Fisher goes rook to f3. And it's a very nice uh, uh, active position for white, regardless of being down a pawn. You can see that uh, the bishops are slicing all the way uh, against the black king. Uh, the, the queen is also very nicely placed. The rook is coming to be doubled on, f on the f file. Uh, this rook can come to g3, h3, well, not h3 at the moment, but it's a very active position for white, and black still has to develop the rooks. So, we have queen to c6 here. Uh, Larson offers a trade of queens. If uh, if you go for the immediate exchange, uh, you know, as you are up a pawn, you might think, okay, I, I might exchange a piece, so, you know, this will uh, only improve my position, uh, but you always have to worry about this rook to g3 idea. Uh, a nice in-between move, uh, the, the Zwischenzug, uh, as some of you have mentioned that you enjoy when I when I use the uh, the Deutsch word or the German word. Uh, so f6, uh, you have to block this rook captures on g7 and only then rook captures on b3. And here, uh, even with, a, with being down, down a pawn, uh, white's position would be excellent as uh, black has a really messed up pawn structure. This bishop is basically a pawn here, so white would have uh, all the compensation necessary. So here, instead, uh, first queen to c6. Larson offers a trade of queens, and we have rook a to e1. You can see, even being down a pawn, Fisher doesn't mind trading queens. Uh, queen captures on e4, rook captures on e4, and now d5. Uh, and okay, we have rook to g3, uh, offering this rook on e4, but of course uh, you cannot accept this. If you accept uh, <laughs> pawn captures uh, on e4, you get rook captures on g7 with check, only move is king to h8, and now you can do pretty much whatever you want. Rook captures on f7 with check, uh, you have to block it, or whatever you, whatever you do basically will result uh, in, in checkmate. Uh, for example, if you go to g8, king g8, uh, you're gonna get rook g8 check, king moves, rook captures, uh, rook has to block, simply bishop captures, King goes here, bishop captures, king goes here, uh, rook captures, and now there's really no defense here. Whatever you play, uh, you will be checkmated as the bishops are creating a nice wall here. Uh, but okay, uh, there are a lot more way ways this can uh, go, uh, a lot more variations that can be played out, but all of them lead to checkmate. So g6 first by Larson, and here we have bishop captures on d5. Here Fisher uh, wins back uh, Larson's extra pawn, and uh, it can it's pretty much a draw here. After bishop captures, rook captures, we enter this uh, endgame where white has a 3-2 advantage on the queen side, uh, but uh, two rooks each, uh, opposite colored bishops, uh, most likely a, a drawn endgame, e even... I mean, regardless of what can happen, it's, it's a drawish position. Uh, so after this bishop to d5, Larson, uh, a draw really doesn't uh, do much for him. So he goes the bishop to d6. He attacks Fisher's rook on g3. And uh, here, uh, like I said, Larson could have gone for a draw here and probably uh, many more times during this game, but he has to win, start uh, winning uh, some, at least some of the games in the match. So bishop to g d6 attacking the rook on g3. Uh, and here Fisher goes rook captures on e6. So Fisher is no longer interested in a draw uh, as Larson prolongs the game. Now Fisher wants to win this. Uh, we have bishop captures on g3. You cannot capture here because after bishop captures on e6, uh, the king has really nowhere to go. You have to block and then rook to f3. You attack the rook here after rook blocks. Uh, you can simply grab a pawn and then only after this exchange everything uh, on f7 and then you would enjoy two extra pawns uh, and win this game easily. So after rook to e6, we have bishop captures on g3, uh, and then now comes rook to e7. Uh, of course, you cannot capture the bishop and allow f captures on e6, so rook to e7. And now you, you can see that Larson's bishop is under attack, and also the b7 pawn is under attack. So you have to save the piece, bishop d6, rook captures on b7, and now rook to c8. Uh, offering the a7 pawn, but uh, Larson would uh, enjoy grabbing the c2 pawn. Of course, uh, Fisher will have none of this, he pushes c4. 
uh, we have a5 and rook to a7. And here we have a position where Fisher is up a pawn, uh, and he does have this excellent centralized bishop pair. Uh, but all in all, it's very unlikely that you could actually... Uh, well, it, it, it will be hard to defend against this, uh, this pawn chain on the queen side, uh, but everyone was uh, pretty sure that Larsen could do it. Uh, but even, even in this position, Larsen is still pushing for a win. Uh, bishop to c7, he protects the a5 pawn, and now we have g3. Uh, uh, you know, reducing the mobility of the bishop, preparing, uh, you know, uh, so the king can come into the game. Rook f to e8, and now king to f1, not allowing the rook to come crashing down uh, on the first rank. Rook to e7, we have bishop to f6, uh, rook to e3, and bishop back to c3. So Fisher doesn't really uh, have any, any actual plan, he just... Uh, I'm sure he would not mind a draw here after so many wins, but uh, Larsen still pushes for the win and he tries to find a way how to do something here. Uh, h5 was played and now rook to a6 with some nasty threats like rook captures on g6 as the f7 pawn is pinned. And now comes bishop to e5, a very interesting move by Larsen uh, as now rook captures on g6 with check wouldn't uh, do all that much. Simply king h7, now your rook is under attack. Uh, after we move the rook, then bishop captures on c3 comes. b captures on c3, and now after rook comes to b8, uh, you can see that now it's the white king that's actually in a lot of danger here, and black would be better here. So, after bishop to e5, we have bishop to d2. Fisher finds a beautiful way to, <laughs> to trap Larsen's rook. Uh, as now, after playing bishop to e5, the rook can no longer go back. Uh, we have rook to d3 attacking the bishop, and now king to e2 attacking the rook. The rook, uh, only square for the rook is d4. Uh, rook to d4 was played, and now comes bishop to c3. And now the rook no longer has any squares. If rook g4, then the bishop on e5 would be hanging. So uh, rook c captures on c4 was played. Uh, bishop captures, and now rook captures on c4. Uh, you don't want to capture here because rook check would pick up uh, after king moves would pick up the bishop. Uh, you would still have a better position uh, because of the 2 to 1 advantage uh, on the queen side, but you would still have to uh, work for your meal. So after rook c4, king to d3, attacking the rook. Now rook moves, and now comes rook captures on a5. Uh, rook captures, bishop captures, and bishop captures on b2. So what happened here, uh, basically Fisher reduced uh, this entire game into uh, a three pawns against uh, three pawns endgame uh, with uh, the same colored bishops, but this endgame is completely winning for white, so we can also use it as a nice example of how to win uh, endgames when you have uh, the outside pass pawn. So uh, when I saw this position, uh, okay, a4 was played, uh, then comes king to f8, Larson of course wants to bring his king into the game. Uh, here I thought, uh, okay, bishop to b6, seems like a very nice idea, the bishop guards all the dark squares, uh, you know, this pawn has to step on until promoted to a queen, but this would actually be a much longer way uh, of uh, capitalizing on your advantage, because here, if you just start pushing the pawn, uh, the king would uh, be able to be able to stop the pawn, and then once again you would still have to work for your meal. It's still much better for white, and you would most likely win this, but you know it would be it would take much longer. So here Fisher plays the absolute best move, bishop to c3. He offers the exchange of bishops, and most likely the best uh, thing to do here would be to avoid the trade. But even if you avoid the trade. Uh, white would simply push the pawn a5, uh, after the bishop stops it, simply attack the bishop, bishop goes back, offer a trade of bishops, if you move back, simply a6, a7, and black would have to give up the bishop, and now the, the position is easily winning for white. Uh, so, Larson tried to capture, we have bishop captures, king captures, and king to e7. King to d4 was played, and now we have a classic situation where uh, black has to deal with the pawn uh, on the queen side because Fisher can simply push it to victory. And while the black king is busy with uh, the pass pawn, uh, the outside pass pawn on the queen side, Fisher will, sim will simply gobble up all of the pawns on the king side and easily win the game. So king to d6 was played. We have a5, uh, f6, uh, we have a6, king to c6, a7, king to b7, king to d5, we have h4. Uh, and king to e6, and it was in this position that uh, Bent Larsen resigned the game, and now we have a 5-0 result in this match for Bobby Fischer. Uh, why did he resign? Well, there's no, not that much to do here. Uh, whatever black plays, white will simply gobble up all of the pawns, and black will simply not be in time to, to prevent white from promoting the pawn. Black will, white will simply create a wall against the black king here and simply push uh, his nice uh, passed G pawn to victory. 
So yeah, after this uh, king to e6 move, uh, Bent Larsen resigned the game and uh, yet another great victory for Bobby Fischer. Uh, I'm sure Larsen definitely prepared for this variation as he, well, he, he had a terrible loss in game 3 after that a6 queen to c8 idea. And now he prepared queen to c8, a move prior to a6 and Fischer <laughs> moves uh, f plays f5 uh, nonetheless and uh, again... It's like, uh, it, it's as if he just uh, laughed at Larson's face, but I mean, uh, Fisher was pretty much satisfied with a draw in this game, uh, and Larson had to push for a win, and the, the end result was another victory for Bobby Fisher. So yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. I do hope you enjoyed it and that you're enjoying uh, the coverage of the Bobby Fischer series so far. The links to all of the games we've covered will be in the description below. Also, we are more than welcome to check out the uh, match with uh, Mark Temano if you haven't, and also the entire pa Palma de Mallorca Interzonal Tournament. Uh, I would like to thank Ray Fowler, uh, Joseph Kupreshanin, Elliot Korte, uh, Dusan Jancic, and Bethany Lowe for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon, uh, most likely with game 6 uh, of, the of the 1971 uh, semifinal candidates match between Bobby Fischer and Bent Larsen. Uh, thank you all and I'll see you soon.